Our next speaker is Dr. John Teasdale from the Sustainable Agricultural Systems Lab in Bellsville, Maryland. Let's welcome our speaker. Thanks, John. Um, we're going to switch gears now and uh, talk about the federal government. Um, and uh, actually, a lot of the things I'm going to have to say are very similar to what my colleagues have already talked about. Um, I thought I'd, I'd start out by just asking some questions. Uh, do you enjoy answering scientific questions? Do you enjoy discovering patterns or relationships in data? Do you enjoy the challenge of distilling research findings into a well-written paper? Do you enjoy generating new ideas by collaborating with scientists from other disciplines? Do you enjoy educating stakeholders in the public about your area of expertise? Do you take satisfaction in contributing to the solution of national problems? Um, I'd say if your answer is yes to those, then, then you would be very suitable for a job in ARS. I know my, my answer is yes to all of those. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the things I, I've enjoyed about, about working with ARS. I like being outdoors. I think that's maybe one reason that I that I went into agriculture originally. But I enjoy planning planning uh, uh, field research programs. Um, I enjoy uh, collaborations. Um, in the lower, this picture down here is a, a team that started the sustainable agriculture program at uh, Bellstone, Maryland. Um, yeah. And it includes a range. It's not just all scientists, but there's, there are members of the farm crew, there's administrators, and it took a whole team of people to get that program going. Um, enjoy interacting with uh, uh, colleagues at international uh, meetings. Um, also enjoy analysis. Um, I enjoy getting data after experiments are done and seeing what, what they can tell me about the system. Uh, the, this is a present from a presentation I made last year uh, just showing a multiplicative model for testing synergism uh, between metolachlor and vetch uh, uh, residue um, effects on emergence of weeds. Um, my personal career has spanned uh, a wide range of activities. I began uh, looking at herbicides for horticultural crops and from there uh, moved to working with cultural practice by herbicide interactions weed suppression by cover crops, sustainable crop production. Uh, we've developed long-term cropping system experiments and uh, more recently uh, started working with organic uh, farming systems. And I, I think in ARS you do have the freedom to uh, develop your program and move in directions that you have interests as long as you're a productive uh, um, so let me, let me just briefly go through the uh, 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 profile of ARS, um, Agriculture Research Service. Uh, we're, we're the in-house science research arm of USDA. Uh, overall, there, there's more than 1,200 projects, uh, 2,500 scientists, postdocs, 6,500 other employees, 100 plus labs around the country, uh, approximately $1.1 billion annual budget. Um, as I say, there, there are uh, locations in most states around the country. Um, the ARS Weed Science Program is broken into four components, um, weed biology and ecology, chemical control of weeds, biological control of weeds, which has the most number of projects, and weed management systems. Um, a few uh, accomplishments from each of these uh, programs. Uh, group in Morris, Minnesota has uh, been very active over the years in developing uh, models for the timing of weed emergence as a function of growing degree days and soil moisture. Uh, can be used for uh, predicting optimum time for rotary homing and cultivating. Uh, Steve Duke's group in Oxford, Mississippi has, has focused on natural products as herbicides um, and use these as, as a way of identifying unique uh, modes of action. Uh, research in 
uh, biocontrol is quite varied from uh, insects to pathogens. I just have identified here work on, on uh, identifying elicitors and plant pathogens for bio, biological control of asteraceous uh, weeds. This is a Pseudomonas infecting Canada thistle right here. Um, and in cropping systems, there's, there's research um, in all parts of the country just shown here work that's been done in Pullman, Washington on developing conservation cropping systems for winter annual grass control. Uh, important in this area where control of erosion is important in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so re research in ARS generally focuses on projects of national importance that tend to transcend state boundaries uh, projects often that would not be conducted by industry, uh, projects that require a longer term commitment of resources than would be available for grant funding. Uh, and this is because there is a, a in-house space funding available in ARS. Um, and also, uh, just wanted to mention that researchers can advance in grade and salary while remaining a scientist, so you don't have to move into administration to to move to higher, higher grades. Um, so candidates uh, for a position, um, I've just listed uh, um, a few items I think are important. Of course, first it is a government job, so you do have to meet uh, basic civil service requirements. But above that, I, I think for a uh, scientist hired in ARS, it's important that you, you have a demonstrated ability to independently conduct a productive research uh, program um, to conduct all, all phases of research from planning and conducting, analyzing, interpreting, and writing up. And the writing up is important. Uh, I think also ability to, to uh, publish in peer-reviewed journals on a regular basis is, is uh, important feature. It is a publisher parish environment that we that we live in, so ability to write is important. Um, I think also it's, um, and this has probably become increasingly so, so over my career, but is, is uh, capacity to contribute to multidisciplinary research teams. I think most of the research now that's being conducted in ARS does in, include teams, and, and uh, so I, I think it is important that you be able to uh, demonstrate that capacity. Um, I think also ability to regularly interact with non-technical audiences of customers and stakeholders is important as well. Um, uh, briefly to go uh, talk a little bit about the application process, uh, basically your application will go through HRD where they're, they're just looking to, to uh, make sure you meet the minimum job requirements that moves the application on to the uh, selection committee. And there it's important to document your abilities um, and specifically to address what's called KSAs, which is knowledge, skills, and abilities. There'll be a list of items, usually four or five items, that are uh, specific to the job. And it's uh, very important that you address those. In fact, it's good to actually uh, prepare a written answer to each of the KSAs just to show how your background matches because that those uh, KSAs are actually scored by the selection committee and the top uh, uh, the top group from that selection are the ones that go on to the interview phase. Um, uh, some of the regular activities of ARS scientists once you would have the job include uh, making up five-year project plans um, that include identifying customers, outcomes, products, objectives, approaches, collaborators, milestones. Uh, then, you would, then you're expected to write annual project reports. Uh, there are annual performance appraisals. And uh, we also have an, what's called an RPES process, which is uh, essentially a career assessment process that, that uh, looks at your overall career and the impact that you have had, and this is on a three to five year cycle. Uh, the first is for uh, retention, so after you've been in the job about two and a half years, uh, this is 
uh, like the equivalent of tenure that uh, you go before a retention uh, panel and at that point then they decide whether you're going to uh, continue on as a permanent ARS scientist. So to conclude, there is accountability, but I, I think there is, is also the freedom and room to be creative and, and to uh, achieve scientific excellence with your program.